brother, it is so great to see you. You look so fit and so trim, and you've got the biggest smile on your face. And I'm thinking, <laughs> how does this guy always find positivity in everything? And you ended up with the big C a little while ago, too, man. And we're talking COVID. How do you do this, man? Yeah. You know what, man? I just, you know, I've been an artist my whole life. And you know what it's like for artists, especially in Canada. Um, you have to be optimistic. If you think about it, it's crazy to think, hey, I'm going to make a record. I'm going to make, put it out. I'm going to make a living out of this. Actually, and then I'm going to do a restaurant, which is like a crazy business as well. And then I'm going to do the broadcast industry. So if I don't maintain optimism in all of these industries and the way my life works, man, it'll all fall apart. So that's where I'm at, man. Look, you know, we just, you know, just recently had the Juno Awards in Toronto. Do you, when you hear the word Junos, do you think about back in the day uh, when uh, you and two other people that you were associated with back then uh, yeah. Yeah. won your Juno Award? I do. I always think about that. You know, this year was really cool. They actually hosted a, a rap brunch for all of the the people who were nominated for, for awards in the rap category since the 90s up until today. I, unfortunately, I couldn't make, uh, make it. I was uh, traveling, but man, I really, really wanted to make that rap brunch. And, you know, that would have been just such a monumental, cool thing to be at. Um, I don't got to explain to you how special that moment was, you know, so unfortunately I missed it. But yeah, of course I think about that, man. Man, you've done so much. And it's funny because now, see, of course, when I first met you, I was associated with you with music. These days, people associate you more with, you know, the food industry and your restaurants and things like that and being a chef. And, you know, as we speak, you know, long weekends coming up and, you know, you've done segments on barbecuing and things like that. Um, it, maybe this ain't the, the I'll ask anyways. What do you enjoy being associated with the most? Is it the music part or when people see you and they say, hey, that's the chef? Well, you know, you got to prepare. Like, I'm about to do a whole bunch of other waves of stuff that will extend the brand even more coming in the next couple of years. So look out for that stuff. For me, Rudy, man, it's always just about making things. Making things and helping people and making space and community for people. So whether that's music, a restaurant, whether that's a cookbook, whether that's a, a music video, a live show, a TV show, any of those things are just tools like to express creativity and to bring people together. That's always my motivation. That's always what I do. It just ha so happens that food and music are really, really good ways to get at doing those things. You know, uh, uh, what's the, uh, the restaurant called? The one up at the airport again? It's called Twist by Roger Mookie. Okay, how was how did you how was it for you having that restaurant? Because I know when we first talked about it uh, a while ago, and, you know everything was going great, and then COVID hit. Yeah. So how was the restaurant doing during COVID when things had to close down? Like, you know, because it's still yeah. there. Thank goodness. Yeah. But yeah, you know, yeah, how yeah. tough was it? It's tough, man. You know, we had to close down for a few months uh, because travel had just stopped, you know, and nobody knew what was happening early, early on. So we closed down for a few months. Then gradually some restrictions lifted and we opened on a skeleton crew with a skeleton menu and just gradually built it up over time, over time. And, you know, people, what we're seeing right now is there's just a pent up demand for travel. So people are traveling more than ever that I've seen in the last six or seven years that Twist has been in the airport right now and it's it's just it's nuts man the, the traffic going through there we make sure that we're safe you know we move to qr code menus and touch points and wiping protocols and all that kind of stuff so we've been transitioning and gradually pivoting along the way like everybody else has been in every industry um but from a travel perspective right now it looks like it's not stop man it's go 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 so you know we're back up full menu full staff um and everything is really clipping along so you know, hopefully from a from a um, operational standpoint like that, we can continue to serve the customers. But we don't know what's going to happen with this next wave um, or if there's another wave. But the good thing is, is we've gone through the worst of it, we hope. And that if we need to pivot and keep bouncing, we can bounce as necessary, you know? No, but just curious. Bounce. Just curious because I know some restaurants, uh, you have to make sure you have a reservation. Some are walk-in. What are you saying? 
Well, because we're in the airport and you need a boarding pass, we don't take reservations, right? It's just like, as you walk yeah. up, you pull up, you do your thing. If you don't want to pull up, you just want to go to your gate, you do that as well. So it's really up to the customer. Okay, well, look, one of the big things we want, do want to talk about is new music. You never stop, man. You never, never stop. stop. What is going on? Because we got new music from you, my brother. Yeah, I dropped this EP called Edibles, man. I like to say that it's like a heady rush with a full body buzz, you know? Um, it's a really energetic. I was feeling really, really energized at the time. Um, I did it in the mix of a, a few different kind of like uh, travel restriction things and mixing. And so, you know, at the beginning, I was feeling super energetic. So I loaded up that energy and just went to the studio and the frustration and kind of let that out. But it's really a fun, happy, upbeat record in most ways. It's really, really energetic. There's a record on there called Feel Good that, you know, I think everybody right now, just they just want to feel good. And this is what this record says. It says, F it. I just want to feel good. <laughs> Especially after the uh, pandemic. Uh, the word edibles. When we're talking about music with you, it could mean two different things, man. It could mean <laughs> food or it could mean wink, 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 something else. Well, I like to say, man, the record feels like a heady rush with a full body buzz. If you go to rogermooping.com slash music, and then you'll see the edibles tab, hit that. You'll see there's a whole blurb about it. And yeah, it's fun. It's, you go check that out, man. I'm still going to stick with the wink, wink on that <laughs> one. When you talked about, um, and a lot of artists were going through this, trying to record music during the pandemic. Did you have yourself a, a home studio at the time? Did you have to build a studio for yourself during the pandemic to do what you needed to do? Um, I mean, a lot of people I spoke to, their closets became their sound booths, you know? And let's face it, Zoom, greatest invention for us during the pandemic. Were you using that to do recordings or anything like that or even talk to other producers? Well, in heavy, heavy lockdown, uh, I wasn't going to the studio, but my mind was just racing with ideas. So what happens with me often is I'm asleep and I hear a whole song in my head. Mm -hmm. And I'll realize, oh, I never heard that song before. What's that? So I'll wake up and I'll like sing out the bass notes, sing out the drums, sing out the melody, and then go back to sleep. And then when I'm able to get to the studio, I go and I bang. So, you know, I work with this dude named Jeff Eden at a place called studio8.ca. Um, and, and we bang, it's just me and him in a room and we bang at his studio, man. It's a beautiful studio, sounds incredible. I've been to big, big studios and this studio sounds better than any studio I've been in and, it, and it's in his crib. Um, so, you know, great dude. We work really, really great together and uh, that's how we bang it out, man. I, I also produced an EP for a singer songwriter during the pandemic as well. Oh. And so we posted up in there um, and did some recordings too. So, you know, I'm always active, Rudy, I don't stop. <laughs> of course not, because look, we can sit here and we can talk about music all day long, but then, like I said, we're talking about the food industry and you, my friend, on television. What's going on with this? Yeah, you know, we're always popping new stuff, you know, like we're uh, dropping episodes of Fire Masters that I'm on right now. We just did a bunch of stuff for Wall of Chefs right now. I'm traveling around doing some events here and there. I was supposed to go to Dallas, but I got the COVID and travel around doing some events and stuff like that. So, you know, we're clipping and popping along, man, but. It's going to be really exciting. I'm working on a few other projects that are just insane right now. <laughs> now, as we are kicking into some warm weather, as I told you, I just finished getting my barbecue put together. Yeah, so yeah. you know the uh, barbecue kings and queens are going to be out there. What advice can you give some of us folks out there who are going to start getting the grill going? And, you know, whether it be charcoal or propane, the battle still continues. What advice can you give us in, in, in making our food or even, you know, preparing? And whether it be, you know, people like their meats, there are vegan folks out there these days, too. What advice can you give us on both sides? Yeah, so, you know, I love a lot of vegetables, man. So I'm always looking to add vegetables on the grill. It's very quick, very simple. You've got to heat it heated for whatever else you want to do as well. So I love to work with that kind of stuff. Um but, you know, if you're using like poultry, for instance, I always like to brine poultry, right? I brine it 24 hours in a solution, saline solution um, that has some spices and stuff in there. So it infuses the flavor. It helps a lot to keep the moisture of it while it's cooking and when it's finishing. Uh, but also it helps to season the meat to the core, right? So with poultry, I make sure I do that. 
Um, when it comes to like beef and, and pork, uh, I just like to make sure I'm understanding what I'm working with. You know, I'm going to cook a ribeye very differently than I would cook a skirt steak or a thick cut tomahawk. I would reverse sear um, and par cook before I do the flash cooking. So it really depends on uh, what your end product is and what you were looking to do. If you're looking to smoke a pork butt for like 12, 14 hours and then pull it apart to make some pulled pork, that works. So, you know, the techniques and the methods really differ based on what your end product is and what you're starting with. So you really got to figure out and understand what's the right cut for the end application um, and then work backwards from there, right? I don't know how you lose weight and cook all this great food. I don't know either, man. We, we good, man. I don't know. I just work hard, man. I just work hard doing a lot of stuff, you know? Um, again, man, I, I, I'm so happy and proud for you. So again, what are the shows that we look for for you? Um, it's Firemasters, airs on Sundays, and also uh, Wall of Chefs. We just dropped a bunch of Wall of Chefs on Food Network in Canada as well, so look out for those. And the EP is out now as we speak? Yeah, EP is out everywhere. It's called Edibles. It's not hard to forget. It's called Edibles. Because I'm Edibles. doing the winking still. <laughs> And just here, the artwork is like a green artwork. <laughs> I've seen it. I've seen it. Don't worry. People are going to remember the link. And one quick question too. I know, like you're you're all over the place with television, whatever. Any chance that you might tour this album? Maybe hit a couple of spots. You know, we're just talking about something like that right now, man. I got to go on this culinary tour across Canada uh, for the next month, from the all of June, basically. I'm going from. Um, Thunder Bay to, to Victoria doing a culinary tour is a separate thing but uh, I'm actually looking right now we're having those discussions to see if we can uh, do like some really cool events that mix food and music and Roger Lincoln, you know? I love it my brother you know what so many years you know fro long braids to the hair getting all short now <laughs> these days and everything like we We've grown up, man. We've grown up together, and I love seeing the success that you've you've accomplished. You're such a great role model, and I always say I cannot wait to see what else you're going to do in the future. One last question. Big advice for folks out there who are slowly coming out of this pandemic that might be looking for jobs. They may be just looking for a new path. What advice can you give them? I mean, I'm always of the mind that you hear it all the time. Find what you love and just and just do that. You know, in the beginning, the money might be tight with it, but if you love it and you're passionate, that spreads and you'll find that network of people who are also passionate about that and build that community. And, you know, it takes time to build a community, but if you love it, put in the time, build the community, focus less on like, uh, uh, you know, I got to get to this goal and achieve this number and build your community. The community will will support and take care of you and you will take care of them and you take care of each other. So build community first around things that you're passionate about. A lot of people don't think about that. You speak the truth. My brother, always great speaking with you. Hope to see you in person at some point in time. I may have to wait for the fourth shot, but either way, I hope we can make this happen, man. You be safe. Have a great summer. And no matter what, at least I know I can see you on television and now I can listen to you one more time, man. Thanks again for the interview. Thank you. I appreciate that, man. Bless for all you do out here, really. So long, man. Bless.